Hi, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, yes, I'm a little spastic, I'm a little driven. I'm just gonna tell you guys up front, people that know me, they're like, Shelly, you can run circles around most people. Um, anyways, I just wanted to say good morning, it's Sunday, and I just went to church, and I'm headed up to show property in Heritage Ranch. I was in Cambria yesterday for my three million, a Tascadero for my uh, 600,000, basically 599. And uh, I stay really busy, but God is so faithful and so good to give me business, amen? So I just wanted to share with you guys something really quick. Um, I was talking to a friend the other day and we were talking about hearing the voice of God and just the difference between this prophet saying this, this prophet saying that. And, and how do I know, you know, how do I know that something is from the Lord? And I just want to tell you guys, I, when I was married, I would tell my husband all the time, he's like, how do you hear so clear? Like, how do you know these things? And I said, you know, I heard this from the prophet that was mentoring me, not that I've attained it all. So don't go there. Um, but I'm just telling you, he would tell me, shall he practice on the prince, uh, on the pauper, not the prince. And I would say, okay, explain that to me. And he goes, practice on things that don't matter. Like if you feel that unction of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and another they will not hear. So, so many times people are just looking to the prophets of old and it's like, but in the New Testament, it's like the Holy Ghost came, right? And he lives within us and he's the comforter. So he longs to speak to every single one of us like a good, good father. So it says, if you know him, you will hear his voice. Another you will not hear. So it's a matter of dialing in the radio station to be at that right station. So we're so used to hearing our desires and our wants and the things that we selfishly want that sometimes we don't allow the Lord to tell us what he wants. So it's that still small voice. It's that voice that sorry, it's my client. It's that voice that tells you to do something in the quiet place. It's the voice where it's like a flash. It's like a flash picture. Um, my friend uh, was telling me that the other day, she's like, how do you see so many visions? I go, it's like, a, it's like a flash. It's like an instant little picture. And she's like, I get that all the time. I'm like, that's God. That's God. So number one, line it up with the word. So if you get an action from the Holy Ghost and you go, is this the Lord or not? Line it up with the word. Does it have the fruits of the spirit involved in it? You know, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Does does it have, uh, is it biblically backed? You know, um, is it, does it align with the word of God? Like if the Lord's like, get, go give this person $500 and you're like, oh, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. But God is giving. He is generous. The Bible talks about tithing. He talks about giving in the New Testament that all the money's his, right? So there's a really good possibility if he's telling you to give 500 bucks to some single mom, it's probably God. And then you look at it. So let's go back. So practice on the pauper, not the prince. So I would tell my uh, husband, I would say, okay, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to... Um, and pray and and uh and ask the lord like when you're coming home from work if you just can run by the grocery store and if there's something i need to pick it up that way if it's wrong it's no big deal it's just not the right ingredient but if it is right it's the same voice that tells you pick up that spaghetti sauce it's the same voice that says hey that woman's going to have a child that's barren it's that same voice that says so and so is going to become the next president it's the same voice that says you know god's not the author of fear but of power love and a sound mind it's the same spirit that raised christ from the dead and so you practice on the popper not the uh, the prince. So let's go back. So let's say, um, you're going, gosh, you know what? I, I feel like I just need to get my daughter this ingredient or this thing at the, at the store or at Walmart and you get it, you come home, you're like, Hey, what, were you thinking that? Do you need that? Oh yeah, mom, I needed that. And it's that same voice. So it's confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. I, I really don't promote people, um, that are just starting to hear the voice of God to run up and say, Hey, you're supposed to marry so-and-so and Hey, you're supposed to, you're going to have a baby and you've been, you know, had infertility for 15 years. That's okay. I do know that God can speak in the mouth of babes. Don't get me wrong. I just know I've seen the damage too, where it hasn't come to pass. And, and then they go, Oh shoot. You know what? I thought that was from God, but it wasn't, but a well seasoned person in the prophetic is going to be really, really careful about saying, Hey, the Lord's told me that you're going to have a child. Hey, the Lord told me that you're supposed to buy this house. Hey, the Lord told me that you're going to marry this person. And, and I'm all for it. Trust me. I do it all the time. But it's like, if you just start now and you're a baby in the Lord or you're a baby in that, um, I would practice on the popper, not the prince. So for for instance, um, I do this all the time. I'm a big thrift store girl and any of my friends can tell you this. I'll wake up and the Lord will say, go to that thrift store. And 10 minutes after you show up, you know, this person's going to bring this table. It's going to be $10. It's exactly going to be what you want. And so I've done it a thousand times. I've gone to the store and the thrift store people look at me like, what is she doing? I'm like, I just know this is going to happen. It's going to come in 10 minutes. Sure enough, it'd come. And I'd be like, is it $10 yet? So 
But again, practice on that because no hurt feelings. Nobody's going to be devastated if you're wrong. If the table doesn't come, well, you missed it, right? And so it's like, or practice on hitting thrift store finds. Practice on each other as friends with something easy. Um, and that way you get it exercised. It's like muscle memory. So if you guys work out, I work out all the time. You need to have muscle memory. You're not going to just go in there and do 2,000 sit-ups, right? You're not going to just go in there and do two miles on the treadmill if you're 500 pounds and you've never been on a treadmill. you got to start out with baby steps. So it's the same thing in the Lord. And so right now, I just want to encourage you guys to do that, to practice on things that don't matter so that when you're exercised and you get better at it, right, you get more skilled at it, then it's just no big deal. And when you say, oh, I feel like God is telling me so-and-so is going to get pregnant. So the Bible talks about that prophets um, basically judge one another, right? Let, let every word be established by two or three prophets. So the other thing I want to tell you, I'm going to come over here. Sorry, I was waiting in Starbucks to go to Starbucks, but it's so long and I got to get to my appointment. So I just thought I'd stop and share this with you guys really quick. Um, looks like I'm going to have to do that after I get out of my appointment. But anyways, so what I want to tell you, don't worry, I'm not driving on the main street. It's just in the parking lot. Calm down. Um, so I just wanted to tell you guys to practice on the uh, popper, not the prince. And then as you get more skilled, as you get more in tune with the Lord, then if you have a dream or a vision and you go, oh my gosh, I feel like I, I, I heard the Lord say this, then call a prophet that's been in the game for like 30 years. Call a mentor. Have people you're held accountable to. Line it up with the word. Make sure it edifies and it brings comfort and consolation unless it's a warning from God. That's a whole different story. Um, and, and get people beside you alongside of you and be teachable. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. Don't say I'm a prophet so-and-so. Just say, you know what? I want to hear the voice of God and, and I'm really wanting more of the prophetic and I'm going to glean from the prophets. I'm going to glean from other people. And number one, make sure that it lines up with the word and make sure that it edifies. It brings comfort and consolation. And um, unless you're a true prophet, a lot of times they have to bring warnings. They got to bring the hammer down. So that part's hard. But I will tell you that the prophets in this day and age right now in 2020 and right now, they're being tested. They're being tried and so many are being discounted and discredited. And for one, I want to tell you that that bums me out really strongly. I've been so grieved the last few days when I'm seeing all these apologies, which I said in my last video, because just because it didn't come to pass on that date doesn't mean it's not from the Lord. And there's so many across the board that said it. There's so many dreams, so many visions, so many encounters. And the Bible says, I won't do anything without telling my prophets first. So don't throw in the towel quite yet. Don't throw in uh, the prophetic quite yet. If all of a sudden you're like, I'm totally turned off by the prophets. Think again, think again, and just have hope in God. The Bible says, John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me, you may hear, you may have peace in this world. You will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. So you have the doom and gloom prophets right now. And then you have the prophets that are saying, get out cake and eat it. I'm kind of in between all that because I feel like I'm in the camp of grab your cake and eat it. But I do feel like in this transition, the other day I saw the hordes of hell come down. They look like these pterodactyl things. I know in the spirit realm, things sound weird. But, um, and I even call my friend. I'm like, hey, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. It's like the hordes of hell have been released. But it's like, you know, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And, and so we don't have to worry. We don't have to stress. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Greater is he that's in Shelly than he that's in the world. Right? Amen. So behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means harm you. And so, um, I want to encourage you guys not to be afraid. I want to encourage you guys to live your life to the fullest today. And no matter what happens, it's going to happen. And so we just keep praying. We keep saying, steadfast and whether you're a Democrat, whether Republican, God wants to reconcile. He, he wants to come in and bring reconciliation between the parties, between people, because we've gotten so focused on a party in this last year that we forgot the brother and sisters in Christ. Some are Republicans that are hating Democrats and vice versa. And if you love Jesus, I want to tell you right now, lay all that aside because we want revival and we want to bring God down on this earth to say, gosh, we want to have the biggest revival that we've ever had in history. And the only way we're going to do that that is by loving each other and perfect love casts out all fear. So the more we love each other, the more we set that agenda aside and say, if you love Jesus, let's come to the same common denominator. And if we all pray and fast together and get on our face, we're all going to come to the same conclusion because he's one God. He's not the author of confusion, but of peace. So I just want to tell you guys that really quick as I head up to my appointment that whether you're pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, I don't care whether you're uh, for Biden, against Biden, if you're a Democrat, Republican, we need to lay all of that aside. We need to hearken into the voice of God. But I want to tell you, I do not believe all these prophets heard 
different things. I feel like they all heard the same thing. And because it didn't come to pass in that exact time frame, people are backpedaling now. And so my encouragement to you, whether you're a stay-at-home mama, whether you're a prophet, evangelist, teacher, or preacher, whatever, it doesn't matter, don't shrink back. Don't shrink back because when you shrink back, you miss out on the very blessing that God has for you and, and you're on the verge of breakthrough. So it's like my commissions, right? It's like my three million. If I would have given up after my fourth fallout, which I almost did until the Lord spoke to me, I would have never gotten that paycheck. I would have never had the success of going, God said it, I believe it, and now that settles it. That's what my daddy used to say. So I just want to pray for you guys really quickly. I know I talk fast. Um, and uh, Father God, I just thank you for each and every person. Lord, Lord, I just loose your encouragement upon your people today. I thank you, Father God, that um, we are to encourage each other daily while it's still called today. Not, not weekly, not monthly, but daily. And Lord, I pray for hope. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but God, I just release hope. I just release an anchor of hope today amongst every single person who will stumble across this video. God, I just release your peace, God. I pray, God, that we would reach out to each other, God, whatever political party, and embrace each other and love each other and bring reconciliation today, God. God, so that revival can spread through like wildfire. And God, I release peace, God, to every prophet who's been apologizing where they actually did hear from God. It's just not exactly the date and the time. Lord, I just pray, God, that people would give prophets grace right now. They would just give them grace, God, in this time, in this season. And don't lose heart, y'all. Don't lose heart because guess what? At the end of the day, we overcome the world because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And God doesn't want any man to perish, but he wants everyone to come to him. So be a carrier of hope today. Be a carrier of God's peace today and be a carrier of strength and encouragement today. I love you guys so much and I appreciate each and every one of you and hang in there. Hang in there. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. There's a suddenly there's a shift. There's a hundred day period that was in my dream and God is up to something good. And uh, remember you guys, Noah built an ark. Come on. And, and Joseph and, um, and, um, you know, Joseph with the coat of many colors and just all the havoc and hell he went through in the prison. And then look at him. He went to the second in command. He is the God of restoration. He's the God of hope. He's the God of peace. We have nothing to fear, nothing to fear. Okay. Love you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.